Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Melanowski, Director of Research and Conservation for Ocean First Institute. I'm sorry that I could not be there today, but I put together a short presentation to talk a little bit about some of the research we've been doing at Ocean First Institute on microplastics and plastic pollution. And so plastic pollution, you've all seen plastic, you know, you know what it is, and you know that it's a huge problem. And if you traveled anywhere, you see plastic that sort of shows up just about in every corner of, of the earth. And so here are just two pictures that I took from um, visits to Malaysia and, and Brazil, where I was really disturbed to find in very remote locations and, and remote beaches, just tons of plastic and other garbage that is washed up on, on some of these beaches. So it's a monumental problem. And, and then beyond just the, the overall um, observational part of, of the big parts of plastics, it also continues to break down in the environment to form these small little fragments like you see in this picture to the right, which are called microplastics. And those are defined based on the size of them. So generally it's less than five millimeters, but you can get into even smaller particles that are termed nanometers that are even smaller than that. And Problematically, they are ubiquitous, meaning that they are everywhere in the water column, um, throughout the world, even in remote locations, and they also bioaccumulate in the environment. And so where do they come from? They come from a variety of sources. There's this really nice graphic I put on the bottom from a recent paper here, um, and it talks about a variety of, of very general ways which plastics get into the environment. But generally speaking, it's from our, our use of single-use plastics, from washing um, of our synthetic clothes with the microfibers in there that end up in the water system and into our oceans and rivers, um, and from a variety of other things from illegal landfill to, to just overall waste that, that we create as, as humans that end up in the environment. And so where does it end up then in the environment? Well, it, end, it, it ends up in, in the water, in water that we drink, in the oceans, in rivers, in lakes, and also it settles out into the sediment. So organisms that live in those different environments, be it either in the water column or in the bottom of, of, the, of the water, they have access and, uh, to microplastics in different ways based on where they're living and where they're feeding. And um, so it ends up getting into a lot of these fish and aquatic organisms like worms and, and invertebrates and clams up through all the major trophic levels, even up to big fish, whales, sharks, everything um, at this point pretty much has microplastics in it, scientists are finding, we are finding. And you may have read recently that it even has been found um, more and more in humans. So we're breathing it in, we're drinking it, we're eating it, in all the single use and, and other plastic products that we use and, and are around us on a daily basis, those plastics and the plastic chemicals associated with them get into our bodies, into our bloodstream. So we have a lot of plastics in our, in our systems as well. And so what does that mean? Why do we care about this, right? Is it just a visual eyesore? Um, what harm, if any, do they cause to human and organismal health, right? Well, there's a lot of research that has gone into these questions, many of which have shown things like it inhibits the ability of a lot of animals to, to eat through gut blockage or just from difficulty finding food. If you're a tiny little zooplankton or something swimming around in the water column and your food source like algae is the same size as a microplastic particle, it may be very difficult for you to find the food that you need to, for your energy because there's microplastic in that environment. Uh, microplastics have been shown and continue to be researched on their effects of reproduction, on growth, some of the, the major things that we care about in terms of our own health and of animals that we care about in the, in the environment. They have health effects. They can ultimately end in, in um, survival effects, mortality events, um, and, and also not just in individual levels, but they have um, potentially very big widespread food web effects. So if a small zooplankton eats, eats a, uh, a piece of plastic, that can affect things that are up multiple trophic levels. So the fish that eats that plankton and even up to the fish that then eats that fish. And so these are very widespread problems that we're only beginning to understand. And then there's also not just the plastic itself, but there's also interactions with other toxicants that we care about, like, and, and the chemicals that are in the plastics, like um, BPA, and then there's BC, um, PCBs, um, phthalate chemicals, mercury, DDT, PAH is all these other compounds that, that have always been sort of in the environment and that we've created um, that have a lot of health impacts. Now, what we're seeing is that these chemicals are actually attaching to the plastics themselves. So there's a, an adsorbent 
adsorbent property of the little microplastics that are attracting these chemicals. And you get a cocktail of toxicants that are attracted to that plastic and then end up in our bloodstream or in an in, in animal like a fish's um, body or bloodstream as well. So those are huge um, implications for the effects of microplastics. And so there's, there's a number of different things that we're looking at um, in, in terms of research on, on, this, um, on this problem. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna name three that, um, that we're working on in Ocean First. Um, you have probably heard of today about the, the, the high schools that we're working with to look at the occurrence of microplastics in local streams and rivers in Colorado. Um, I published a paper last year, a review paper, which basically summarizes, looks at all the research that's out there on a specific topic and, and then reports on, on what that topic is and, and all the evidence um, supporting an issue. Um, this review paper looked at the emerging trends, so the, the trends in research on nanoplastic and nanoparticle toxicity. And we looked at a, um, an organism called the Daphne, which is a small zooplankton, as a model organism. And, and it's useful to use sometimes these small organisms to understand the effects of microplastics because they have very fast generation times in terms of days or weeks that we can look at generational or long-term cycles instead of looking at something like a human, which you know, we last um, or we live up to 100 years. And so these short generation cycles can actually tell us a lot about the effects of plastic. And so that's what we did here. We looked at um, all the different, the sizes, shapes, types um, of, um, of nanoparticles that are out there reported in, in literature and how that gets into the environment and then how um, Daphnia and other organisms take that up and what the effects are. And, and looking at what the current advances in science of that are. So what does the, what does the science say that is happening with uptake and accumulation, uh, effects on development, reproduction, and mechanisms of toxicity, all the things that we care about understanding. And then what were some of the future research needs? These are, these are the things that we published in this paper, which you can go and find. Um, and then so right now we're working on uh, what is called a meta-analysis, which is very similar to a review paper, but this, this actually collects data from um, papers that are published. Instead of just looking at what their conclusions were and writing a review like I just talked about, this actually goes into, into depth on each single paper and pulls up the data that was reported in those papers and does a, a separate analysis on those data. So we can come up with our own conclusions based on the overall effect of, of a thing. In this case, we're looking at microplastics and we had three major questions that we are that we are currently looking at, and the first one is um, we're assessing microplastic particles in aquatic um, or semi-aquatic organism abundances in the water and whether or not those are correlated. So when we go out and do studies um, to look at microplastics in the water and we tow a net, um, and then we also look at the organisms that are in that tow, do they both correlate with each other? Are there organisms and plastics occurring in those same tows, or is one absent versus the other? And then the, to build off that, the second question is, um, do wild caught aquatic or semi-aquatic organisms ingest those microplastic particles? So where there's particles, so where plastic or microplastic is in the environment, um, is that showing up in, in the stomachs and the tissues, in the gills of, of aquatic or semi-aquatic animals? And then lastly, is sort of looking at those two things together. If there's higher amounts of microplastics in the environment, does that correlate with higher amounts of microplastics being ingested by organisms? So those are three really big questions, right? So often we look at one or the other, um, measuring the amount of plastic in the environment or measuring fish in the environment and whether or not they, they ingested um, plastic. But this is sort of looking at a comprehensive approach and, and looking at all the literature and what, what is the overall conclusion from all the studies that have already been done on this. So it's a huge undertaking, but it's one that, we're, that we know is worth doing and, and that we're doing right now. And then lastly, we're about to publish this paper um, where we did an experimental approach. So instead of looking at all the literature out there, we looked at, we took a gap in, in data that we knew was there, a gap in knowledge, and we wanted to answer a question based on what are the effects of microplastics on the overall food web? Right, and so we looked at Daphne as a model organism here, similar to the reason why I mentioned in, in the first paper, on um, the review paper that we did. And in, in this experiment, we basically used environmentally relevant concentrations of, of microplastics that have been reported in the environment. And we exposed these small um, Daphnia and also copepods, two different zooplankton species, to microplastics and to algae to see what the, the effects on feeding were and whether or not they ate the, the microplastics 
um, that were around the same size as the algae that we fed them. And so the general results of, of this so far have been that yes, microplastics were consumed much more by daphnia than by the, um, the smaller copepods and that has to do with their feeding mechanism. Um, and what the result of, of that and having microplastics in the environment with them in, in the lab was that it also reduced the zooplankton feeding. So they, so not only were they ingesting it, but it also, because that plastic was in the water, it made it more difficult for the zooplankton to, to find their algae, their food. And so that reduced their feeding on the thing that they need for their growth, um, reproduction and for survival. And then lastly, it, it looked like the, um, the microplastics as a part of that were a release of algae from um, predator control. So because the microplastic is in the environment, it also allows for the algae to grow more because it's not being preyed on as much um, because the predators, in this case, the, the zooplankton are not able to feed on it regularly. So those are the major conclusions of this. So yes, there are there is a food web effect of microplastic as it goes up. And beyond this, we would look to, to then see how does this affect then the fish that feed on the zooplankton on up. So those are the important questions that, that still need a lot of answers and we're working on that. And so some of the cool technology that, that comes along with this, um, you know, you can look at um, the, these, these little microscopic animals, but also microscopic, uh, the microplastic, you have to use specialized equipment and technology in order to even count or quantify um, algae in an animal's gut or what the food that it's eating or the microplastics that are in its, in its gut or its tissues. And so here we use an epifluorescence microscope, which basically allows more illumination of, of the contents within the gut. So in this case, it was algae and it was microplastics. And on the right, you can see we, we actually counted and you can see all the individual microplastics in the top right figure there, which is a daphnia. And in the left, you can see all the, all the algae that's in its gut in one that did not eat any plastic. So, you, so for comparison, one had microplastic and no algae, one had no microplastic and tons of algae. And so those were the sorts of things that we, we were seeing and that we can see with this sort of technology. And so to give you sort of a general takeaway at the end is like we're trying to understand the research that needs to be done and the research is adding to our understanding of microplastics in the environment, what the effects of that are. But there are some solutions as we're, as we're trying to figure these things out. The science will continue to ongo as long as plastics in the environment, but there are things that you can do now. And these, and these are from a personal level, things that you can make personal decisions on and changes to pressuring corporate, um, corporate industries to, to not use as many or produce as many plastics and even politically um, to encourage you know, politicians to, to regulate plastics in, in, the, um, in the marketplace and in the environment. And so you can have influence on all of that just as a personal consumer and as a voter, right? And so there's a number of ways that you can reduce it on your own personal account. One is to definitely say, say no or to severely limit your use of, of single use plastics. That is probably the number one, that is the number one um, way that plastics get into the environment and we're rapidly producing those over and over again. So that needs to slow and, and eventually stop. Uh, we really should not be using all of these single use plastics. Um, there's a number of other ways you can just think about plastic that you use in your daily life, right, and how you might be able to reduce that. You can go online and find tons of information and suggestions on how to do that. You can go to our website on the bottom left corner here at oceanfirstinstitute.org, and we, we have information on um, products that you can use to reduce the, the amount of microplastics in the environment, and we're also starting to sell um, little kits that, that actually give you um, in a packaged way, things that you can bring home with you and reduce your plastic use. And so on, on top of advice of, of what you can do to change your lifestyle a little bit, to, to maybe bring a water bottle with you instead of bringing a plastic water bottle or going to a, a restaurant, bringing your own containers to, to get um, your food takeaway in instead of a, a styrofoam or a plastic container. Lots of little things that we can do to make changes. So with that, I, I thank you for your time and um, I look forward to um, hearing more about involvement in the community with with microplastics and, and other um, pollution problems that we have because as a community um, we can we can make serious um, positive impacts on um, on the environment and on these plastics that, that get into the environment so thank you